Hey guys, welcome to SparkPoint. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create simple fluid animations inside of After Effects. I'm gonna be showing you two different methods. The first method is more so a flowing liquid type effect. The second is a drip and a splash effect. Now there's some far more complex methods for creating liquid animations inside of After Effects, but these two are super simple. And if you're just beginning in After Effects, these are gonna be perfect for you. Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna start off by showing you the simple flowing liquid technique. So as you can see here, I've got a faucet and my liquid shape layer. You can see that my liquid shape layer extends down below my visible comp and it's rounded out a little bit. I'll show you why I like to do this in a minute, but first let's make this water move. To create the liquid flowing effect, I'll come over here to my effects and presets panel and search for wave warp. Once applied, we'll want to adjust these settings a little bit. For this purpose, I like to set the wave height to around 10 and the wave width to around 100. This is essentially just going to control how big my waves are. These settings will vary greatly on the size of your artwork you're working with, so play with these until you get a look that you like. Next, I'll set my direction to 180, so the waves are moving vertically rather than horizontally. I'll then set my wave speed to 4, just to speed it up a little bit. And again, this is something you can play around with until it looks just right for your situation. Now if I play this back, we'll have a never-ending flow of liquid from this faucet. Now there's a lot of different ways you can apply this same technique to liquid animations in After Effects, but of course this is a very simple example. We can take this a step further and animate the liquid coming out of the tap. This is where that rounded path at the bottom of my liquid shape layer comes into play. I'm not gonna dive into too much detail here, but essentially I'm just going to animate this path so that it looks like it's coming out of the faucet. And that rounded path is gonna help keep this looking like liquid instead of a rigid shape layer. So now that I got that where I want it, if I play it back, you can of course see that the water is coming out of the faucet. All right, that's it for that one. Let's jump into the drip and splash animation. So the first thing I'm going to do to get my drip effect is I'm going to create a line that goes from the faucet down to the spot I want my splash. For me, I'm just going to leave a little bit of space at the bottom and that'll act as my invisible floor for the splash. I set the thickness of my line to about 60, but obviously feel free to set that to whatever you feel looks best in your situation. I'll next drill down into my stroke properties and set the line cap to round cap. That'll round out my stroke. Next, I'm going to modify my taper. Find your taper properties and set your start width to 50% or so and start length to 100%. We'll next want to add the trim paths effect to this stroke. Go to add and find your trim paths. Once that's applied, set both your start and end to 0%. At the beginning of my comp, I'm gonna set a keyframe for the end percent, which at this point should be zero. And I'll come forward to about frame 15 or so and drag this percent out just a little bit so our drop is just peeking out of the faucet. Here I'm trying to kind of mimic real life where Water doesn't necessarily just drop straight out. Usually it kind of balls up at the faucet head before actually dripping. So for me, 12% or so looks pretty good. I'll then ease this keyframe and set my ease velocity to about 80% or so, and we can get a really nice smooth ease when the drip kind of comes out of the faucet. Next, I'm gonna move forward a couple frames where I want the drip to actually begin. I'll set another keyframe for my end and also for my start on the trim paths. I'm going to move forward about six frames and then set my end to 100% and my start to 99%. I'm then going to ease the keyframes at the beginning by hitting F9 on my keyboard. You'll want to trim back your layer to where your drop hits the bottom here. So now if we play this back, we've got a drop that slowly peaks out and then drops. Now let's create the splash. I'm going to draw a curved line stemming from our invisible floor. This will be the path our little splash will take, or at least one of our little splashes. I'm going to set my stroke width to 30, and just like with the drop, I'll make sure that my stroke line cap is set to round cap. Then I'll come down to my taper properties and set the start length to about 63%, and the start width to about 54%. We'll now add trim paths just like we did with the droplet. I'll start by setting both the start and end on the trim paths to 0%. I'm then going to move my playhead to the spot in my timeline where I want my splash to start and set a keyframe for my end property. I'm going to jump forward in my timeline four frames or so and set the end to 100%. Next, I'll jump back a frame and set a keyframe at the start. Jump forward about three frames or so and then we'll bring this up to 100%. Next, I'm going to animate the stroke width so it kind of thins out towards the end of this animation. I'm going to set a keyframe on my stroke width just a couple frames before the end here and I'll come to the end and set that stroke width to zero. Now, if you play this back, your drop or splash should look similar to this. From this point, it's very simple to create the rest of the splash effect. I'm just going to duplicate this same layer several times and I'm going to modify the path of each of these so they're going all in different directions and they're different lengths. 
You can also adjust the stroke width on all of these so that there's some variation in the stroke width as well. Just like how actual water would splash, it doesn't just go all one way, it kind of goes all over the place and there's different sides of drops and all that kind of stuff. So when you're duplicating these, just make sure there's a lot of different variation in the direction, the length, and the stroke width. So now that I've got that kind of where I want it, I'm going to play back the whole animation and you see that we have this awesome splash effect. And if you want from this point, you can duplicate all of those layers over and over again and just loop this animation very easily. All right, and that's it. You should have everything you need to create some simple fluid animations inside of After Effects. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and of course subscribe. That will help us out a ton. And if you personally use a different animation technique for liquid inside of After Effects, let us know down in the comments below and we'll see you next time.